Uh, my name's Josh Flynn, I'm uh, 32, and um, I'm a publicist for Alex Perry and a mentor on Australia's Next Top Model. Uh, my experiences with bullying um, during high school was quite widespread. I mean, we had a lot of like bigger guys in my school and I was a, you know, teenage feminine dancer, so that didn't go down too well. But surprisingly, I um, wasn't bullied too much. I got the usual, you know, poofter, faggot, that whole lot. But I, I don't know, maybe I was a little bit tougher. I kind of dealt with it. But a couple of my friends who, who weren't so tough were bullied quite mercilessly. And it was, it's, it's, um, it's so pervasive. You don't realise at the time because as a teenager, you spend your whole time trying not to be bullied. So unfortunately, um, I ended up bullying people who were a bit dorkier or, a, you know, you, you kind of pick on, it's pick or be picked on. So you kind of um, had to do it. And I'm not proud of it because bullying is such a, a general term, but it's very personal to everybody who has it done to them. And um, even from my small experience, it, it still carries through with me today. Like when I'm in large groups of really masculine men or um, people that I think are bigger than me or quite threatening, I immediately adopt a different sort of personality. Like I'll be a little bit more butcher, I'll be like, yeah, or whatever, like just so I don't get picked on. And, um, and that's me, who's, I'm quite a strong person. So I can imagine somebody who isn't as strong or as socially adept, it, it's, it's punishing and it, and it can actually change the way you, you, you react and the way you act in society. It's, um, it's awful, it carries through not just in your teenage years, but even to when you're an adult, like how you deal with people and how you see yourself and how you find your own self-worth as well. When you're told when you're younger that you're worthless or you're nothing or you're this or you're awful or you're stupid or whatever, if you get told that enough times, you believe it. And it's not true, but you believe it. So you then act that way and you, and, and you believe that you aren't somebody who's important and you aren't somebody who's special. And that's bullshit because everybody is, but you don't know that when you're a teenager. You only come to understand that as an adult when you start to realise that those people that told you all those things are probably worse off than you and they were only doing it out of insecurity. Having said that though, that doesn't excuse bullying at all. It, it shouldn't happen. Everybody should be able to feel comfortable in their own skin and that they have a right to be who they are. And I think it's awful, especially these days now. Back in my day, I mean, I'm not old, but back in my day, we didn't have Facebook and Instagram and Twitter where you, you know, if you got bullied at school, you could at least go home and, you know, get a break from it and get back to reality and understand that you aren't or you're not what those awful people tell you you are. But now you go home and you switch on your computer and people can bully you 24 hours a day. And it's, it's harassment and it's awful. I mean, it should be illegal, but you know, how do you stop something like that? And, and cyberbullying is even more cowardly because you're doing it from sitting on a computer where people can't see your face. Um, working on Top Model, a lot of the girls, when they left the show or whatever, could go on Facebook and, and, and they would get, you know, ripped to shreds by, you know, Jenny and Doonside who can sit there on her couch in her tracksuit pants and tell so-and-so what an awful bitch she is. And that's not true, but... <laughs> How do you stop that? I mean, one girl in particular, um, Simone, got you know terribly harassed after she left because she was painted as the villain. And you know, it's okay for somebody to do that. Well, people think it's okay for somebody to do that because you know she was on TV. Oh well, if you're on TV, you have to expect that. Well, you don't. She's a 16-year-old girl, and it really upset me and it really upset Charlotte. And we actually had to take a lot of action on Facebook and Top Model's Facebook page to actually stop that kind of bullying from happening. I mean, these are teenage girls who, you know, are still growing and understanding who they are as people and becoming women. And for, for people to sit there and judge them in their lounge rooms, it kind of made my blood boil a bit. So it's not right. I don't think anyone should judge anybody else based on, you know, a five minute spot on what they see on television or what you see walking down the street. You know, humans are naturally judgmental characters and I just think it's, I think it's wrong. I just wonder as a society why we deem that that's acceptable to make somebody else feel worthless and make somebody else feel that they're not as important as you are. But where does that come from? You know, I, re I find it really kind of base and really evil. And I think this program is a great way to actually turn that tide and educate people to not, not judge people so quickly or, or, to, or to have more faith in yourself. So that way, you don't bully somebody else or make somebody else feel worthless to make yourself feel better. 
It took a long time for me after high school to feel like I had anything to give or anything that was worth anything. Um, I wasn't particularly bullied, but I was picked on a bit because I chose to be a dancer and because I was quite feminine and theatrical and, you know, it's like the dorky kid at school. They don't really kind of grow into a swan until they lose all their downy feathers and kind of, you know, get out into the real world and, and, and do stuff. And it wasn't until I started to work and get some success behind me and understand that I was actually good at what I did that I felt like I was worth something. Having said that, though, I'm 32 years old and I, I still don't love myself or anything. I, I think Australians in particular are taught not to love themselves. They're always taught to, oh, well, don't get too big for your boots or, you know, don't, don't think too much, don't want to be up yourself or whatever, whereas Americans aren't really taught that. They're taught to actually, you know, be proud of who they are and, you know, told when they're very young that you can do whatever you want to do. And we're not taught that so much here. I think it's a very British colonial kind of way of looking at things that, you know, you have to actually downplay that your strengths and I think that needs to change and I do think more so from the next generation especially like from tweens and up they are taught that the world is their oyster and they can do whatever they want and if you work hard and you become a good person then you deserve success and we were never taught that so even to this day I still sometimes when I do get something that would naturally be a success even last weekend I was at home with my family who I don't see that much because they live interstate they were asking me, oh, you know, you're going to be doing this and you're going to be doing the Logies and this, that and the other. And a part of me should have been happy, but I wasn't. A part of me was like, oh, well, you know, I still got to keep doing this. And, oh, you know, why, why am I getting all of this? You know, do I deserve this? And I think that comes from being taught at a very young age that you shouldn't be proud of what you do and proud of who you are. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago when I hit my 30s that I was proud to be a gay man. I was never proud of that. It was just part of who I was or you know, something that happened to me or something that I was and, you know, not something to be proud of. But the older I get and the more confident I become and the more public my persona is, the, the prouder I am to be a gay man because I think you owe it to, to yourself and, and, and to your sexuality to, to be proud of who you are. Yes, it is only a small component of who I am, but it's still who I am. And I think people should be proud of that. And I think gay men and, and women in particular don't or aren't allowed to voice that as much especially in a public arena I'm not allowed to sit on television and talk about my boyfriend or whatever because people at home don't want to hear about that but we hear about you know cricketers wags and stuff getting married all the time and I think that slowly but not quick enough I think that needs to change and I think with more gay people being in the media and being in the public eye it becomes more natural and I hope that younger people who are being bullied for being gay or or different understand that you know I was lucky, I guess, you know, I, I didn't get as bullied and I've been quite successful and I'm publicly a gay man and I hope that there are people out there that can see that you don't actually have to be particularly beautiful or smart or even that actually talented to get somewhere if you keep pushing and I'm proud of what I've done and I'm proud that I'm gay and that's taken a long time but if, if you keep telling yourself you, you will get there and, and you do deserve to be like successful because everybody's special. I know that sounds <laughs> gay, excuse the pun, but it's kind of, I think everybody needs to know that, especially young people, because that's when you start to, you start to form who you are as a person when you're a teenager and when you're going through puberty and when you're a young adult. And I don't think enough media agencies or outlets or, or public figures tell people that it's okay to be who you are, as long as you don't hurt anybody else. It sounds a bit twee and it sounds, you know, I guess a 16 year old gay guy sitting here, you know, watching this is like, yeah, it's all right for you. But, you know, I was that 16 year old gay guy 16 years ago and you get through it as long as you have a support network and as long as you believe that what those people tell you isn't true. It isn't. Nobody is worthless and nobody is wrong because they, because they sleep with men or women or, you know, whatever. I don't think that that defines who you are, but I think you should be proud of it and that, and that sooner you understand that that makes you part of who you are, use it to your advantage and those bullies will go away. So then you're left with yourself and sometimes you can be your own biggest bully too. So you have to not teach yourself. It, it, as I was saying before, it comes back from when I was younger, I was never taught to be proud of who I was. So the sooner you can be proud of who you are, you can work on who you are and become a better person and then the world really is your oyster. So.
I think as an adult, bullying is still very, very prevalent, but it's always a lot more subversive. It's not so much a group of people picking on you publicly or getting shoved at the filing cabinet. You know, it's never as obvious. It's always much more pervasive and very, very underlying. Um, I worked in a very large agency where I was the new boy and having your own ideas was great, but you were very aware of your place and what you are and what you should do and what you should say. And that taught me a lot of things because now that I work in a much smaller environment and I'm a little bit older, it's hard not to, to kind of adopt that culture again when you're the actual manager or you're the one that's on top. You, you, you try not to bully your interns or your assistants because you want them to do the right thing. But it is very, in my experience, bullying is, as an adult, much, much more underlying. There's, there's still a current of... of of being told what to do and what to think and to fit in but it's never as obvious and being on the show and being on tv you do get a lot of negative feedback from the public as much as positive but when when you're older you can actually you can take that it still doesn't not hurt when you're you know told that you're you know a disgusting faggot or whatever on twitter but you know what you have to just kind of or i know i do i just i concentrate on the positive what was more worrying for me was the kind of bullying the girls were getting because they were so much younger than me. Um, I found that quite disgusting and very, very surprising that people would, would judge someone from a you know, 12 minute spot on a TV show that she's a slut or so-and-so's fat or you know, that those, those words are very, very general in our society, but very, very damaging to somebody who's hearing them and absorbing them. When you're 16 years old or when you're younger, you, you're so open to criticism and to suggestion and you're so pliable and your whole psyche and the person of who you're going to be is still forming and, and to hear those kind of detrimental comments, it, it's awful because no matter whether or not you shrug them off and a lot of the girls are like, oh, well, I don't care, that, that's fine, it doesn't matter. It does matter and it, and it, and it, does, it does get to them and it does kind of absorb into how they see themselves as women and it's not right and I think it's an awful part of our society these days because everything is so immediate and everyone can contact anybody all you have to do is google it it's it's scary where it's going to go because you're actually getting bullied 24 7 from across the world it's not just in your in your lunch break or at recess or in the quadrangle or at work, it's everywhere. It, it, it's so pervasive and invasive that I wonder where it's going to stop. And it really bothered me during the show that the girls were getting bullied by people who didn't know who they were or from a thousand miles away in Brazil or from the comfort of your you know, trailer in Western Sydney. You know what I mean? It, it, people don't realize how damaging words can be. You open a magazine and you know, they're a model, so they want to be a model, so they look at models and it's body image, it's sexuality, it's how you see yourself. It's very, very soul destroying to hear that you're not good enough or that you're too big or that you're too tall or that you're not pretty enough or there's enough of that in everybody's life. All you have to do is you know, flip through a magazine. So to be told that in your private Twitter or Facebook page that you're a slut just because you wear a bikini or you're fat because you don't fit into a sample size. It's bullshit, like it's not right. Become a community brave mentor and together we can change the world.